Hi everyone, this is Heather from WeddingsbyHeather.com where my goal is to equip you with the best techniques and tips to make you a better and more efficient photographer. In this video, we're going to take a look at another new feature inside of Lightroom. But first, make sure you check out my free workflow video series available on my website. In a previous video, we used the new HDR function inside of Lightroom to merge the photos that I had taken of our church. In this video, we will look at a few new enhancements to the graduated filter. Let's go ahead and take this merged copy of these photos into the develop module by pressing D on our keyboard. We're going to access the graduated filter tool by pressing M. And what I'd like to do is bring out this sky a little bit more. So I'm gonna pull down on the exposure and I wanna give it a little bit more blue and I'm going to click, I'm gonna hold down shift while I click and drag, that's to keep it level and just kind of bring out a little bit more of this sky. And then you could obviously play around with the settings to see how you would like it. I don't think it's a good idea to make it look unnatural. This photo was taken at about 6.30 or 7 p.m. So the sky was certainly not that blue. And in fact, it was a little bit stormy looking. So I'm not gonna add that much to it. Previously, this was about all we could do with the graduated filter tool. I mean, you could use it different ways on different photos, but new in Lightroom CC, in the Creative Cloud and in version six, we have this brush option. So if you go ahead and select the brush option, you now have the ability to use this tool almost like you would the retouch tool, the adjustment brush tool, but we can erase areas that we don't wish to be impacted by this change. So I want to make sure that the change I impacted on the sky is not affecting the church. And right now I know that it is. So I want to erase that. So what I'm gonna do is I have my brush. If I have my feather turned up, obviously I have a soft edge, but because the church has a very hard edge or a line of contrast between itself and the sky, I'm gonna keep that feather turned all the way down. And then I could start to, you know, click and drag over the church. You can see what's happening. It is subtracting that change. But what happens is when you go beyond the church, you get something like that. That's where auto mask can really help you. If you turn auto mask on, Lightroom will attempt to constrain the subtraction within areas of contrast. So it'll try to stay within edges. So let's go ahead and undo that with a command or control Z and this time turn on our auto mask and start to drag over the church and you'll notice that it's not going into the sky but keeping it just on the roof line. So I'll brush around in here. How can I be sure that I've impacted everything? Well, you could turn on your mask overlay, which is simply O on your keyboard. And I can see I missed an area right there. But I also, what I notice is that steeple. That steeple is still impacted by this change. And I think I wanna bring it out a little bit more. I'm gonna press O on my keyboard to turn that off. And I'm going to zoom in with a command or control plus on my keyboard. And what I'm gonna do is make my brush, well, that size is good for this part of the steeple. So I'm just gonna click and drag over it. But what I want to do when I get up to the smaller part is again, auto mask is turned on, but I'm going to make this brush smaller with my left bracket key. And I'm going to see what happens. And Lightroom is doing a really good job at constraining that effect. So I'm going to press my left bracket key again and continue to work my way up the steeple. I'm going to press O on my keyboard just to look at my overlay again and I can see it did a pretty good job. I did not go for the cross. <laughs> I could have tried to zoom in and make my brush smaller, but I don't know if it was, is that imperative to do that. So I'm gonna press O again to turn that off and then zoom out with a command or control minus. I'm going to press M on my keyboard to drop that tool. And then the backslash key, remember that's the key that leans to your left. The backslash is above the enter or return key. And I'm gonna look at my before and my after, and I think that that looks great. I hope that you found this useful. I will see you in the next video.